Thanks everybody for being here. Um, appreciate you coming to this media availability session with uh, Liberty Director of Athletics, Ian McCall. Obviously some big announcements today with uh, some expansions coming to Williams Stadium for the football season coming up this fall. Uh, new seating opportunities and uh, Ian's here to answer some questions on that and some other things surrounding Liberty Athletics. So Ian, with that, I'll turn it over to you. Let you talk a little bit about uh, what some of those expansions are coming to Williams Stadium and then we'll take questions. Yeah, thanks, Nick. Well, we're uh, less than eight months away from the start of the 2022 football season, and uh, we believe it will be the most anticipated in Liberty football history between uh, welcoming Virginia Tech and BYU and our home opener against UAB, along with uh, some of the seating improvements and hospitality changes that we're going to make. Uh, certainly, we're looking forward to welcoming uh, Liberty fans and the Lynchburg community to Williams Stadium for uh, what will be a, a really special year of, uh, of football. I think as you may have seen, we have uh, already have over 1,500 football season ticket deposits at this point, so we expect to eclipse all previous season ticket um, and total ticket sales uh, records. Uh, fans can begin ordering their season tickets uh, this Monday, and we expect that they're going to go very fast. So uh, again, when, when fans enter Williams Stadium this fall, they'll see a lot of improvements. Uh, it'll be a, a very different experience, and we're, we're excited about the changes that are forthcoming. Very good. Uh, we'll open it up to questions here. If you want to use the raise hand option uh, at the top of your screen, we'll start with Damian Sordelet from the Lynchburg News in advance. Ian, the Cabana, Cabana's idea has been, I think, somewhat relatively new. Um, I know UAB, North Texas, which were on the 2021 schedule and Liberty visited, had those. Or did you get some inspiration from seeing how those worked? And did you talk to other ADs from programs that have used those types of enhanced seating to as gauging whether or not that would work at Williams Stadium? Yeah, we, we did a lot of research on, on Cabanas. And, and you're right, there are a number of schools that have had a lot of success marketing uh, them, including Mississippi State, UCF, Kansas, San Diego State were some of the ones we talked about. Uh, you mentioned some others. Uh, Georgia Southern's another one that, that added them. So um, we'll have 23 cabanas. They will each have a seating capacity of eight, and uh, we think that they will be very desirable for both uh, our fans as well as uh, some of our Flames Club members. Let's go next to John Manson from A Sea of Red. Hey, Ian, in addition to uh, those cabanas in that end, end zone, uh, also going to be regrading the berm. Um, you know, what should fans expect to see out of that? I mean, obviously we see the, the photos there, uh, maybe a couple different levels just above the, uh, the uh, band. Yeah, we, you know, I think the south end zone is going to be a very attractive place for uh, for fans to watch the game. There are a number of schools that have uh, done a berm. We did one when I was at Baylor at McLean Stadium and uh, became a really popular area for overflow seating. So that's uh, the plan. It's a little bit different experience where you can put a blanket down and, and sit on a on a terraced uh, berm area to watch the game. And uh, we think it's a very fan-friendly type of uh, environment. So we're excited about bringing that to uh to Williams Stadium this fall. Just as a quick follow-up to that, uh, would would those be tickets to that? Have you figured out yet if you're, you know, would be available for each game or even season tickets, or is that just on an as-needed basis? Yeah, we're planning on opening it as needed, and it would be essentially an overflow seating area. So uh, that, that's uh, that's our plan, and uh, it could be a mix of uh, the general public and students, or uh, just it'll just really depend on what the the demand would be. Um, but it gives us some, some flexibility. I think it's something that will help our, uh, our sales team quite a bit as they, uh, particularly with some of these high demand games that we're, we're expecting this, uh, this fall. There's something else, Ian, is uh, just, you know, outside of the cabanas, but I mean, everything's going to chair back now on the west end of the stadium and then the bench back seats in the upper deck on the, uh, on the east side. How important was that just to upgrade you know, seating experience everywhere? Yeah, we, we wanted to do something for all of our fans. And uh, on the west side of the stadium, we'll install chair back seating throughout. So that'll provide a, a better experience for all of our, our fans. And then on the upper east side of the stadium, all the seats will be upgraded to uh, to bench back. So more of a premium experience for, uh, for all of our fans. And uh, we're really excited about uh, being able to, uh, to roll all this out. Obviously, it's going to be a lot of work. Dan Dieter and his team have a lot of projects at the stadium. Uh, they do a great job. And uh, we're looking forward to having everything in place uh, prior to the first game. Go to Thomas Wilkerson from 90.9 The Light. 
Hi, Mr. Ian. So I was curious to know how long have these plans been in action? Because I know y'all didn't just wake up one day and say, hey, let's extend the stadium. Yeah, Tom, so we've been, obviously, we, we, every year there have been improvements to Williams Stadium, so uh, it's a multi-phase project, and I think this is uh, phase four, maybe even phase five. Uh, we've just continued to uh, to uh, build it out and improve it each and every year. So, again, we've, we've taken on quite a bit this year with all of these improvements. We're also going to be installing uh, a new field surface in advance of the 2022 season as well. So, uh, again, you'll see a lot of uh, activity over Williams Stadium, but all of it's going to lead to a, a better experience for uh, for fans and for our team. Will that Real be the quickly, same? I... Sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead, Thomas. Real quickly, when can we expect um, construction for the cabanas and everything? Yeah, they're, they're going to begin uh, construction at the end of this month, so it'll begin very soon. And uh, typically we work up pretty close to game day, a little closer to game day than I would prefer, but um, it'll be, uh, be a busy uh, spring and, and summer uh, here on campus. Will that be the same kind of field surface that's currently there? Will there be any changes like draining, any, anything like that, or just basically just refreshing what's there? And how often do you look to do that, just out of curiosity? Yeah, the the, uh, the life expectancy for a, a field of that nature is typically in the ten year range, and so uh, the life cycle has has expired. So we'll be uh, putting the new surface in. It'll be the same product uh, that you see on the uh, the practice field, uh, and uh, we'll uh, we'll have a few uh, few changes in terms of the field markings uh, to uh, I think enhance the overall uh, appearance of it. Great. Right, let's go to uh, Luke Randall from The Champion, then we'll get back to Damien. Uh, you mentioned that construction would be starting at the end of the month. Does this impact commencement in any ways? They'll work through commencement, but obviously we'll make adjustments to ensure that commencement goes off uh, uh, seamlessly. Obviously, that's a really important event for uh, Liberty University, and uh, we want our graduates to, and their families to have a tremendous experience. So we'll make whatever adjustments we need to to, to ensure the commencement goes uh, goes off uh, in a great, great manner. Go ahead, Damien. Ian, with the move to chairback seating on the west side, is that going to adjust seating capacity at all by having to put in individual chairs versus the benches throughout that area? There will. There'll be a little bit of an adjustment. There'll be some lost seats over on the west side, and that was one of the reasons why it was really important for us to open up the berm to create some uh, additional seating opportunity and capacity within the stadium. So, uh, uh, yes, that is correct. Uh, Thomas, go ahead. Yeah, I wanted to know how important is it for Liberty to make this adjustment? going into the 2022 season and then going into Conference USA in 2023. Yeah, we think the timing of, of these projects works out really well. Obviously, we had had 2022 circled because of the, uh, the two home games with Virginia Tech and BYU, uh, ones that we believe we could reach capacity. And uh, so finding ways to create additional uh, opportunities such as the, the, uh, the berm, uh, was something that we thought was important, and uh, it also gave us, again, a chance to upgrade the overall seating within the facility. So uh, the timing of this project is, uh, is right, and uh, we're really excited about uh, um, what it's going to do for, uh, for our program. Also, too, if anyone has questions uh, in addition to the stadium expansion, feel free to ask those as well. Uh, I'm sure Ian will continue to answer questions about the stadium, but if, if anyone has anything else, feel free. Uh, Luke? Uh, obviously, the stadium has gone extensive renovations over the last four or five years. Uh, is there a plan for a final number of capacity that you would eventually want to bring the stadium up to over the ne course of the next few years? Yeah, look, that's a good question. You know, we, we do have the ability to to increase capacity, and you know, we want to grow with the program. And obviously, uh, Coach Freeze has done an incredible job with him and his staff going twenty six and eleven, and and uh, winning winning three straight bowl games. So. We have a great product. There's a lot of excitement. Uh, ticket sales are growing, but we want to we want the stadium to grow with the program. So it doesn't help to expand to 40,000 seats if we're drawing, you know, 20,000 people. Um, so we're going to uh, be really judicious as we look to uh, to increase capacity. But this is a step in that direction by opening up that south berm um, and uh, and creating some additional op uh, opportunity for for fans this year. 
Damien. Yeah, I know the, the athletic department has mentioned this uh, several times, but right now only season tickets are available uh, for all games. And I think you've mentioned, I think the releases have mentioned only season tickets can be bought for Virginia Tech. And how important is it for, I guess, you know, fans who want to attend those games to buy season tickets? If fans want to attend the uh, Virginia Tech at Liberty game, they would be very well served to buy a season ticket because if they don't, I think they may be out of luck. You know, we, we don't expect to be be able to go beyond uh, season tickets for uh, for that game and quite possibly for BYU as well. So uh, any Liberty fans out there that are contemplating buying season tickets, this is absolutely the year to do it um, because of uh, the quality of the schedule and the quality of our, our program at this point. And a, a change of topics, uh, with the convention going on in Indianapolis, how closely have you been monitoring the talks there, and especially with the SI article that came out by Ross Dellinger recently about whether the Power Five wants to create its own uh, division within Division One, and how that shakes up to where you want Liberty Athletics to be in a few years. Good. I'll be spending uh, this afternoon um, with the business session, the convention, and then the voting session uh, later on. So I'll, I'll get about uh, four and a half hours of uh, NCAA convention Zoom time, and uh, um, we'll be uh, obviously keeping close tabs on everything. It's a really interesting time in, in college athletics. Obviously, a lot of discussion between the college football playoff, the transfer portal, name, image, and likeness. There's a, a lot uh, that's going on right now. A lot of very big topics are uh, uh, converging on college athletics all at once and uh, obviously with the uh, change in the uh, NCAA Constitution and the Transformation Committee becoming active, uh, there's uh, a lot of change on the horizon as well. So we're uh, very engaged in that and uh, excited about uh, uh, the future of uh, college athletics and uh, Liberty's uh, role in that. Is there one topic that kind of comes to the forefront, you think, though, with so many things going on at once, like you said? Is there is there one thing that tends to stand out that, that everyone kind of wants to tackle first? Yeah, Nick, I think because they all impact one another in some ways, it's hard to just parse out one topic. So I think uh, people are trying to look at things comprehensively. I think there's a lot of uh, concern just in, in general as I, I speak to my colleagues. But, uh, you know, with concern comes opportunity, and uh, I think there's some good things that can uh, – uh, can be realized as we, we go through some of the, the transformation uh, following the, the convention. John. Hey, Ian, with the Liberty's uh, move to Conference USA here starting in 23, obviously there's some games that have to be shifted, and, and we've seen some that have, have kind of leaked out. But, uh, you know, if you could give us an update on, you know, just the current status of moving some of those games and, uh, you know, how, how that's going for, you know, I know you got games out to like 2031, I believe. Yeah, John, I think we told you when we first made the transition from FCS to FBS, we worked on scheduling every day and we're back to working on scheduling every day, but it, it's in a different way. And uh, Mickey Gritty is working diligently on adjusting our, our future football schedules. Uh, we've made a lot of progress uh, with the 2023 schedule, which will be our first year in Conference USA. And uh, we've also made uh, some adjustments in 2024. Um, what we're going to try to get to eventually is uh, a model where we're playing uh, one Power Five, a regional Power Five every year, a regional FCS every year, and then two uh, Group of Five rivalry games each year. That's what we want to get to. Now, I, I can't promise we're going to get there in 2023 or 2024 just because we have to We've got a lot of work to do going from 12 games to four games. But um, anyway, that, that's what we're aiming for. And again, uh, Mickey's doing a great job. We're making a lot of progress, and uh, uh, we are working uh, uh, daily on uh, football scheduling. Thomas. Bouncing off Mr. Manson's question, I'm curious, are we going to keep that game against Coastal, considering they're, rival they're our rivals nowadays? Yeah, Tom, so we have several uh, games with Coastal, and uh, that's, that's one we'd really like to, uh, to keep. They would fall in the category of a group of five rival, and uh, I think those are, are games that make a lot of sense. You know, Old Dominion, uh, again, that's a good series for us. So we'd like to keep some of those regional uh, group of five games that uh, make a lot of sense, that are appealing to fans. And then again, try to have one power five with a regional opponent, probably an ACC team, 
uh, in most cases, and then uh, an FCS uh, in the region as well. And uh, again, because our conference is fairly spread out geographically, we like to play most of our non-conference games uh, within the region because we are going to have some lengthy trips to uh, uh, Texas, New Mexico, and so forth during the, the conference schedule. So we think that uh, fits us best. Damien. And you, uh, you, Mickey, talked to me about this during the transition about how Dave Brown, um, you know, has been a big help uh, with getting those schedules put together. How much has he been a help in making sure you guys are able to shift some games around and help out Sam Houston State, James Madison, Jacksonville State moving up to FBS and their need for games as well? Yeah, Dave Brown and Gridiron are uh, invaluable. He does an amazing job really working with schools all around the country. And, uh, you know, we are at a point where because we do need to move some games off our schedule and there are some schools that are moving up, as you mentioned, Jacksonville State and Sam Houston, uh, James Madison. And uh, as a result of that, there's some schools that are looking for games. So that does, uh, that does help, and I, I believe that's going to end up being a solution in a number of cases for us where uh, games that are currently on our schedule will land on uh, the schedule of uh, one of those three teams. Um, and there's some other uh, moves out there as well. But, uh, yeah, Dave Brown's been a tr tremendous asset and, and great to work with. Thomas. Yeah, and my final question, with the additions being added to Williams Stadium, are there any other sporting facilities you have your eyes on to upgrade in the future, like the baseball stadium, for example? You know, we're really blessed here because so many of our, our facilities are, are very new, uh, you know, constructed in the last, you know, three to five to eight years. And so we don't have a lot of needs to upgrade Williams Stadium's one of the exceptions is it, it's one of our older facilities and it needed to... Uh, a lot of attention to upgrade it, but uh, when you have a facility like Liberty Arena, it is it obviously state of the art in every way, and uh, really not in need of any any upgrades. So, um, yeah, we're in a fortunate spot that uh, again, uh, Williams Stadium is getting getting most of our focus. And in addition, to some of the the uh, improvements I've already mentioned, we're excited about some uh, hospitality and concessions. Uh, changes that are coming as well that we think will really impact the, the game day experience for our fans. We'll roll out a little bit more information at a later date on that, but I think those are some areas that we're going to make some big progress on as well. His last thought for me, if you could just kind of speak to the success that both men's and women's basketball are having right now and just looking on from your seat and just how impressed you were. I don't know if you heard any of that that I just said. Yep, I, I uh, heard everything. Okay, said. sorry, my, my mic has been going in and out. Yeah. Uh, if you could speak to that and then just also where Liberty is in the Learfield Cup. Okay, yeah. Yeah, I lost about the last five seconds of your question, but I uh, got the idea. But, yeah, I saw a graphic the other day that we were, I think, third in the country in terms of combined wins uh, in men's and women's basketball. And, obviously, uh, both teams are, uh, are having tremendous years. Uh, Coach McKay, again, going for a four straight A-Sun championship. Uh, this is uh, the women's teams having a tremendous year and high in the uh, mid-major rankings. So uh, both programs are, are flourishing. Uh, they are very tough to beat in Liberty Arena, as we found, with uh, – um, both teams having a lot of success there, so uh, we're really excited about that. And uh, also, as you mentioned, uh, we had a very good fall, uh, particularly with field hockey leading the way, uh, competing in the NCAA championship match, and the success of football and cross country. And it really uh, gave us uh, a tremendous fall in the Learfield uh, Cup standings. And hopefully, we can follow that up in the winter and in spring, and be in position to have one of our best, if not our best, uh, finish ever. All right, last one for Ian comes from Damien. Ian, a similar question to what Nick asked, but I was, you know, I talked with Joe Carmi last night. He believes it's the first time, like, baseball and softball in our season both ranked in preseason polls, and I don't think either program's ever been ranked at the same time. Is there are really high expectations for those, you know, I guess the the benchmark programs in the spring to see how well they, they do building off going to regional finals last year? No doubt, and and you know, really, that's one of the things uh, I think we're all excited about is is uh, you know the excellence is really permeating our entire athletic program. And if you look around sport by sport, we we're blessed with great coaches. Our student athletes are thriving, and uh, 
we're having success uh, across the, the board. And uh, I've always believed success breeds further success, and uh, we're um, we're enjoying that right now. And uh, certainly have uh, have high expectations for the remainder of this year and moving forward. I, I've used this term a few times, but I think we're in the midst of the golden age of Liberty Athletics, and I think our, our programs are uh, are demonstrating that.